Now, a couple of formulas you need to know for kinematics are um, final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The distance, or the x, is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Another one is final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the di change in distance. And finally, speed is equal to distance over time. At this point, I believe we will take better than a 148 to qualify for the final. Our first topic of kinematics is projectile motion. Now, for projectile motion, you have to divide your data into x, y up, and y down columns in your chart. Next thing you need to do is plug in your givens. For the x, you know the acceleration is equal to zero. And for y, you know the acceleration is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared, which is equal to gravity. For that throw, you know that the shot put was in the air for 1.3 seconds and it went 8.3 meters. Now you have to plug that information into the equation delta x is equal to vot plus 1 half at squared. The acceleration cancels out because overall on the x-axis the acceleration is zero and ta-da! You get your initial velocity to be 4.86 meters per second. Now if you want some more examples of projectile motion on the track, look at these videos. The next topic is centripetal force and circular motion. Now with circular motion, you have a force that's directed towards the center perpendicular to the velocity. Go, Christian! Well, that was me showing you an example of our next topic, circular motion. Well, the equation you need to know for circular motion is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, we're going to say acceleration is just equal to velocity squared over radius. Now, for this equation, we know my mass is 48 kilograms, my velocity going around the turn was 5 meters per second, and the radius of the turn of the track was 8 meters. So now, after plugging that into the equation, you find the centripetal force of me going around the turn to be 150 newtons. The next topic that we're going to do is energy. Now, for track physics, we're only going to need two of the energy equations. The first one we're going to need is kinetic energy is equal to half mass times velocity squared. And the second one we're going to need is potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. Good afternoon, and we have the young men taking over. Thank you, Tom. Now, we're going to say that the girl stopped right at the top of the pole. So she didn't have any speed, she just had potential energy. And at the bottom, before she hit the mat, we're going to say she didn't have any height, so she just had kinetic energy. We're going to set the equation up as mass times gravity times height is equal to 1 half mv squared. But the masses can cancel out on each side, so you'll set your equation up like this. Well, after you solve it out, you'll find the velocity of the girl right before she hits the mat to be 6.81 meters per second. Momentum, our next topic, is great because we get to look at the failures of track. Well, the normal equation for momentum is mass times velocity of a system before a collision is equal to mass times velocity of the system after the collision. When the girl on the pole hit, the velocity of the pole is zero, but then right about here, something happens. The girl on the pole collide and some of the girl's energy is transferred to the pole. So we need a new equation. Mass times velocity of the girl before the collision is equal to the new mass times velocity of the girl plus the mass times velocity of the pole. Now here's a quick review of our physics formulas. For kinematics, we need to know V is equal to VO plus AT. Delta X is equal to VOT plus 1 half AT squared. V squared is equal to VO squared plus 2A delta X. For circular motion, we need to know FC is equal to MAC. And we're going to say that AC is equal to V squared over R. For energy, we need to know that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, and potential energy is equal to mgh. 
And for momentum, we need to know m1v1 is equal to m2v2.